Hi, I'm Dave McGinnis with the Accelerator Division, and I'm going to give a, a little brief talk about transition crossing and accelerators. It's something that we do in a lot of our accelerators here at Fermilab, and it's something that's very important to us as we start running with very high intensity beams. So before I talk to you about transition energy, the first thing I need to do is talk to you or try to explain how accelerators work. So at Fermilab, they're pretty simple. We have a one place where we give a kick to the particle, kick it, and then we want to use that kick over again. So we take the particle and we bend it back around and we give it another kick. And we keep going around kind of like a supercharger on Hot Wheels, going faster and faster each time it goes through. Well, you can kind of see though, is that if I have this voltage, this kick, this energy is only in one direction each time, then basically my accelerator shorts out my kicker. So what we do here is instead of using like DC voltage like a battery, we use RF waves that you would use like in a radio transmitter. So if I want to draw a picture of what that looks like, if this is how much energy I have here, and this is time along here, then we use an RF wave which comes up and down to give energy to the beam. So where we place the particles is a lot like how we place a surfer on a, on a big wave in Hawaii. So we don't want to really place the particles up on top here because if we do that, then uh, it would kind of be like the surfer would kind of be losing his balance back and forth. Where we really like to place our particles is kind of on the slope. So it's a lot like a surfer would be as he gets a little bit of uh, stability as he rides in the slope. So what happens if, well, this is fine for a particle that's riding right in the right part of the slope, but what happens to one of our particles if it gets too much energy? If it has too much energy, then basically he's going to go around the accelerator faster than the particle that had the right energy. So if he goes around faster, he's going to come around in a quicker period of time. So at that point here, he's going to ride here. He arrived earlier in time. So if he arrives earlier in time, if you show here, he gets less energy, which is nice because the next time he comes around, he's going to have, uh, he's going to have, next time around, he's going to take too long to go around and he's going to have too much energy. So he kind of uh, pinballs back and forth between too much energy and too little energy. So you kind of picture a surfer on the wave in Hawaii just kind of going back and forth up and down the slope of the wave. So this works fine until um, we get into the relativistic range of the particles. As we keep pumping more energy into the beam, they keep going around faster and faster. But particles can't go faster than the speed of light. So we go talk to Mr. Einstein, and Mr. Einstein told us that famous E equals mc squared that if I start pumping more energy into it, eventually I start pumping mass into my particle. So now my particle has more mass. So picture yourself at a NASCAR racetrack and a car that has too much mass, he's going to have to ride on the outside of the track. A car that has very little mass, he gets to ride on the inside of the track. Okay, so now let's take a look at our particle here that has too much, that has too much energy. Okay, if he has too much energy, he's got to ride on the outside of the track, he's going to take a longer time to get around. If he takes a longer time to go around, it takes, he goes even further up the slope of the sine wave, and then you could imagine our surfer flying off into outer space as he keeps getting more and more energy. So what we have to do here at, at, at Fermilab is right at this critical time called the transition energy, when the particle has just the right amount of energy, we have to flip the phase of the, R, of the radial frequency wave. So I'm going to draw the, right on top of it the phase of the RF wave. So now we'll take a look at our particle again and we're going to sit here and say, okay, what happens now if he has too much energy? Again here, if he has too much energy, he's going to take a longer time to get around. So if he takes a longer time to get around, He's going, to, he's going to end up here, and he's going to get too little energy, Okay, when, which is now he has too little energy. He's going to take a shorter time to go around because he's, he's lighter, and he will end up riding on, let me finish one more wave here. He will, he will end up coming over here and get too much energy. So this point where we have to flip the phase is called the transition energy, and it's a very critical time for our particles. If we don't get the transition flip exactly at the right time, then our particles tend to want to leave the machine. So we're very careful when we flip the phase, and uh, this is very important to us now as we start pushing the intensity of our accelerators up higher and higher. So the booster, the main injector go through transition, but the Tevatron, we try to avoid it so we inject above transition so we never have to go through this thing called transition energy. So it's a pretty simple way of explaining transition.